May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Well, the voice from heaven is added again. At Jesus' baptism, the voice named him the beloved son. At the transfiguration, it named him beloved and commanded the disciples to listen to him. Today, it affirms that God has been glorified through Jesus, and Jesus tells his disciples that the thundering voice speaks for their sake, not for his. After all, Jesus is intimately familiar with this voice. He's forever sneaking off to hear it and attend to it, whether as a little boy going to the temple and terrifying his parents who have no idea where he's gone, or stealing away from the crowds in order to pray and commune with the one he calls Abba, a deeply loving and familiar term for father. Jesus knows the voice, but do we? Do the disciples? Throughout the Bible, we learn of a God who is deeply committed to communicating, to speaking, to making God's self known. From burning bushes, to commandments written on tablets of stone, to prophets, to a baby born in a manger, God is forever speaking. In our beautiful reading from the Hebrew Bible today, God says, I will put my law within them and they will write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. The Hebrew law code spans much of the Hebrew Bible and contains hundreds and hundreds of laws and commandments. Some about what kind of cloth to wear, some about how to worship, some about how to be ritually pure, some about what and how to eat, many about how to treat the poor and outcast and how to deal with wealth equitably. equitably. Not just the Ten Commandments, but literally hundreds and hundreds are in that law. And now suddenly that law is going to move from being something outside of God's people that helps govern every aspect of life and worship to being something that lives within them. God's covenant is written on their very hearts. They are the living, breathing, walking embodiment of God's voice and God's love and of God's deep, deep desire to relate to us. The voice. It may not often speak to us in a burning bush or like thunder from heaven, but the voice still, it speaks, just as it did to the disciples. So do we train ourselves to go inward, to find the covenant written on our hearts, to be silent and to hear the voice that has been calling for centuries, that calls each of us beloved, that calls us to walk in the way of God's love. This week, we are preparing to head into Holy Week, the hardest, most magnificent, most mysterious part of the church year. And this week, the scripture tells us that the voice from heaven has hard words that are meant for the disciples and today are meant for us. On the surface, they sound shiny and bright. God is glorifying God's name through Christ. But what does that mean? Jesus tells us that the hour has come for him to be glorified, and that means death. His and ours. Very truly, I tell you, he says, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now the words don't seem nearly so bright and shiny and exciting, but there is a beautiful promise embedded in this call to death. Because the death is like the burying of a seed from a plant that dies and let loose, lets loose the grains within it. Those grains, those seeds fall and are buried beneath the ground, But when the time comes, they burst open and bear so much more life than they could have if the plant had clung to them and refused to let go. Hating our life in this world is a hard phrase, and it doesn't mean hating ourselves or turning away from the many extraordinary gifts God has given us in this world. At creation, after all, God named it all good. 
Throughout the Bible, the phrase this world often refers to those forces working within the world and within us that cause pain, hatred, despair, injustice, rot, destruction. It refers to that which pulls us and others away from the deep love and abundant life God means for all of us to have. That is what we are called to reject and let go of. Jesus is walking the last part of his earthly journey in this week's readings. He is getting ready to let go of his very life, to die, to be buried, and then enter into and invite us into an ever more extraordinary resurrection life. And we are invited to walk with him as his followers. We are invited to let go of those things that we cling to that are full of death and destruction. And even those things that we love, but are cheap substitutes for a life shining with God's love. We are invited to let go. And then to let ourselves become the living, loving embodiment of God's covenant, of God's deepest desire to relate to us and to fill us with resurrection life. As we prepare to accompany Jesus from the waving of palms to the Last Supper and finally to Gethsemane next week, how can we still ourselves to hear the voice from heaven? How can we let go so we can burst into new life? Jesus promises that after death, he will be lifted up and he will draw all people to himself. Will we let him draw us And will we let ourselves shine with his life so brightly that we too will draw people to God's ever-welcoming, ever-embracing love? May it be so. Amen.